Yep, I won't do it automatically. So, oh no, we're good. It says your event is starting. <clears throat> and we are live. Very good, nice. So we pretty much got that one with no technical difficulty. Maybe. That is. We'll see once uh, somebody throws a chat in right. there or something says something will be going that we're live. Because last time we had some audio problems, some video problems. Which wasn't my fault. The audio problems was not my fault. It just, something needed to be turned off and back on once you did that. So it was nothing I did. Not technically for, your fault. For once. Not my fault. <clears throat> so what do we got for today? So today we are going to go ahead and we're going to announce the winner for March's giveaway, and then we're going to unveil April's, which is our biggest giveaway we have ever done here, which some of them have been pretty sizable, so that's saying something. Uh, whoever wins April's giveaway is going to be really, really happy. Yeah. I might have to put my own name in, in the drawing <laughs> on this one. I don't think I'm eligible I, I to win. I know you're not eligible <laughs> I don't think to so. win. <coughs> Sherry Wells is saying we've got a blank screen. Oh, I can't see it. Um, Sherry, um, we will see if we can figure that out. Although, you, if you got a blank screen, um, I don't know if that means video or can you hear us? But Harry, we can't see. Are you on our YouTube page or are you at waltonsinc.com slash live? We don't know if you if you won yet, Mike, but we're going to find out here in just a, a couple of minutes. We're going to give everybody just a, a minute here to, to join us. Usually it takes uh, two or three minutes for everybody to kind of hop on. Um, we don't want to announce too early nope. and have somebody miss it. But So just quickly while we're waiting for that, um, run through what the giveaway actually was. Uh, it's the, we're calling it the Dalton's <coughs> Ultimate Knife Set. So we're giving you this nice wooden capuche holder, which you can has these things called freedom rods, and you can set up your knives any way you want. And then we're giving you a bunch of knives that we liked for their versatility. Uh, they're good in both uh, processing, uh, deer, wild game, anything like that, or hog. And we'll also help out just in a normal kitchen cooking. I mean, we've got chef's knives, we've got uh, large boning knives, got breaking knives, and we've got the scimitar for if anyone invades your kitchen and you need to defend yourself, this is the knife you would go ahead and do that with. Uh, we're also getting four Victorinox steak knives, <clears throat> and this is the same knife as this. I just had one out of a package, so I wanted to show that. Uh, we're also going to send along some knife safes. These will keep them safe in shipping. But then also, if you have little kids, sometimes it's a good idea to give that extra layer of protection. Uh, this will keep their little hands safe. And then we've got a uh, chef's choice sharpener. Keep all these nice and sharp, and any you know anything you got in your kitchen drawer that's getting a little bit dull, these will hit up. And then as always, we're going to include a selection of our favorite seasoning shakers, a meat just sticks hat, and a couple of a meat just sticks stickers as well. Uh, now. On hats and shirts, we are starting to look at some new options. Uh, we're pretty much running out of hats. We're running out of a lot of sizes on the shirts. Shirts will probably just be a different color. Probably, I mean, I, yeah. I like these, just maybe something, give us another option. It will shock my wife if I wear another color t-shirt. She's, <laughs> I mean, this is my uniform, is this shirt and jeans. I wear it all the time, and this hat. Um, for hats, we'll argue, but we'll figure something good out. Maybe get a camo that people will actually want to use. Let's Do you want to come say hi? No one's seen you here. No. This is Patrick. Uh, he's our video editor. If you guys have noticed, they uh, it, it increase in the quality of our videos over the last six months or so. Um, that would be the reason why. I'm not doing them anymore. He's doing them, uh, which is better.
in just a couple minutes here, if we get John to fix his uh, uh, microphone here, we will select our winner and announce who's uh, or what the next giveaway is. Um, stay tuned just one second. We're almost there. Am I picking back up? Okay. Just to let you know, too, we are streaming in 1080 this time. What uh, was it? Did you figure it out? I don't know. Oh. Last, last time we streamed in 480, and it was a little pixely. Uh, quality wasn't as good, um, but we got things figured out. We're not sure what we figured out, but oh, we so figured it out. Oh, so you were letting them know. I thought you were saying that to me. Oh, hey everybody. I was going to say, yeah. Somehow I'm being blamed for this, even though everybody knows I'm not the technology guy. James, I do like my cup. Uh, if you want one, uh, the entry fee is to be a groomsman in my wedding, so that's the only people that ever will ever get one of those. Um, so, sorry, I think it's awesome, but uh, limited edition right there. Michael Hunkins, you are not late. Um, we are just waiting a few minutes here to let everybody join, and then we will announce the winner. Um, so we have not announced it yet. Should we go ahead and get it queued up? Do you have uh, I know, I've got everything queued up. I'm just trying to figure... <clears throat> doesn't show things the way YouTube's changed everything is so there we go okay yeah YouTube has a tendency to change things and every time they do we're not really a big fan they changed how they do live streams here and uh, so the past couple live streams uh, we've been kind of complaining a little bit yeah. Uh, yeah it's not the same change is always hard let's see what we had on stats on the last giveaway so the March 20 19 giveaway Walton's ultimate knife set um, not to dash anybody's hopes here um, but we had a total of 112,568 entries um, that's just entries though that's not users. not users users so, was still really high too, yeah though. you can enter multiple times obviously we've got um, several different social media options um, you can like us on YouTube um, used to be able to watch videos, uh, visit our Facebook page, do things like that. Um, so there's multiple ways, but still, um, hopefully, um, somebody out there is rocking four or 500 entries or something crazy yeah, and they'll win, but I'm sure. we'll see. Yeah, I don't even think they can like us on YouTube anymore. They can just visit. It's visit, and then visit. it asks them to like. Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. But if you are not subscribed to our YouTube page, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell um, that way you get notified about each of our live streams, our giveaways. You'll be the first one to know. And kind of as we're doing today, like we have not sent out any other notification about what next month's giveaway is or who the winner for this last month is. So if you want to be the first one to know of what's going on here at Walton's, um, uh, subscribing to YouTube, watching the videos and live stream, that's the way to do it. Sorry, I'm just laughing at one of the comments. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Blake, that made me giggle. That was pretty good. Uh, all right. You, you want to do, do it? it? Yeah. yeah. Do you have it queued up or you want me to hit it? Uh, I, I did the it. last one. You can do it. Draw winner. That's it. Yep. And it's thinking. be great if it was somebody viewing. Yeah. Of all the ones we've done, it has not been someone viewing. But we've it, done two. You can't say of all the ones. You could say Hey, that's both. multiple. Yeah. That is multiple. But... We had the one of the at least one, maybe a couple of the previous winners have been on the subsequent live streams yes. and have commented about it. Yep. We just have not had someone live watching. So maybe that will change this time. Walton's Powerball. <laughs> and we have a winner. Um, we can narrow it down slowly, maybe. Um, it was from it was someone from Tennessee. So if you do not live in Tennessee, I'm <laughs> sorry, you did not win this one. Um, past that, we've now got Hendersonville. So if you live in Hendersonville, Tennessee, you should be getting really excited. And the first name is Ken. We've got Ken Adams from Henderson, Hendersonville, Tennessee. That is our winner. Congratulations, Ken. So obviously, great set. Um, We'll go ahead and email you in the next day or two. We'll get it sent out to you. You should really enjoy this. Like I said, great for not only the processing, but this is gonna improve anybody's kitchen. Victorinox makes absolutely incredible knives. 
And these really are a collection of some of their more useful ones. Yeah. So that's awesome for Ken, but sad for everyone else. But to help keep you guys in somewhat of a good mood, at least, do you want to just go ahead and announce our, our I think we April giveaway? Okay. So not an April Fool's joke. Our biggest giveaway ever is going to be a Broil King Regal S590 Pro grill. So this grill has an enormous amount of space. I think it's 857 inches of cooking space. It's got a rotisserie motor. It's got light up knobs, which while maybe not really useful is incredibly cool looking. It's got five dual tube or dual tube burners, which keeps it hot in both the front and the back. You've got a warming shelf, you've got a side burner, and it's got an all stainless steel look, so it just is impressive right from the beginning. And it's made right here in the USA, which might be my favorite part of the grill. It's got a cast iron cook box with aluminum ends to keep the heat in, so it's gonna maintain a nice and steady pressure. This grill usually retails for right about $1,300. So when you take that, and you know we're gonna include the Walton's hat, we'll include the shakers like we always do, you'd be looking at it about $1,350 for total retail giveaway or retail value on this giveaway. So make sure you enter often, do all the ones that are still available to you, and good luck to you. And if you've won before, you can win again. So Ken, if you're out there, you should try again. If you win once, that improves your odds for the next time, right? I don't, I don't understand statistics though, so maybe it does. It makes you think like you have a better chance of winning. <laughs> <clears throat> All the broken grills though are amazing. They're not like the, the cheap grills you find right. at a uh, uh, home improvement store right. um, that are gonna rust out on you in two years. Um, these ones will last you a lifetime. Um, they're awesome. They are some really sweet grills. Yeah, the winner of our last <clears throat> uh, Broil King sent us some nice pictures of him enjoying it, so. All right, what was his name, Ken Adams? Was it Adams? Uh, yes, Ken Adams. Ken Adams okay. We got a lot of chats going on. Um, thanks for everybody's involvement there. If anybody has any questions on like how to make something or you're having a problem, whether you're smoking, grilling, making sausage, let us know. We'll try to answer everybody's questions kind of as we're going today. And also just to uh, point out, we are getting to a point of the year where we like to start looking at new seasonings, new products. So if anyone out there has seen something in like the summer sausage or snack stick that you're thinking about wanting to try to make, let us know. I uh, will see if Excalibur has it, if it's something they're planning on having. And in somewhat of the same vein, I've seen a lot of reviews recently online through Meatgistics and through our just regular reviews about the dill pickle, jerky, and snack stick seasoning. That stuff is awesome. I've said it in a few live streams and, excuse me, our uh, video review of it was just outstanding. I mean, if you don't like dill pickle, you're not gonna like it. But if you like pickles at all, I mean, it is awesome. It's got a nice little hit of heat right at the end. It's not overpowering, it's just a little bit of spiciness to add even one more element to it. So it's just awesome. I really highly recommend that for anyone looking for something that's different. Now, we talked about this a little bit last on the, or on the last live stream, but I almost feel like we need to do a push back to the basics for seasonings. Because Willie's Snack Stick is so good, but since it's our best seller and we feel like most people know about it, we don't ever really push it. That's kind of a mistake. I bet you we have a bunch of customers out there who've made like five, ten batches of Snack Stick and have never tried Willie's. Yeah. If somebody hasn't tried Willie's, uh, they need to. It, it's My description on it is kind of disappointing. I, I call yeah. it a traditional Snack yep. Stick, but it's not. It is just... It's packed with so much more flavor. Um, it has that hint of heat, but nope. it's not. But it's not hot. Nope. E even people I know that do not like hot or spicy things will still eat it. Uh. Um, but it it is hands down better than everything else we have. 
Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty big statement. I mean, snack sticks and summer sausages, there's a ton of great seasonings, but I mean, Willie's is the best out of them. Mm -hmm. So you've got that, and then in uh, pork sausage, also our best seller is the Holly regular. That's also the best tasting. I mean, the only other one you put up against is maybe one of the hot ones, the H110C. Yeah. I mean, it's good, H110C is good. But I mean, they're best sellings for, or best sellers for a reason. The only major one I would say where a best seller isn't my favorite would be the H Summer. I knew you were gonna yeah. say that. Barbecue habanero is the best summer sausage season. It's really good. Awesome. It is just not, it do, I don't know. To me, it's not a normal summer sausage. It is a good play off of a summer sausage, but it doesn't have a normal summer sausage flavor. Mm. If you were looking for something summer sausage-esque um, that tastes fantastic, I would, take. I would probably eat the habanero barbecue over the H summer, right. but I think the H summer is huh. the better summer sausage seasoning, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. But how far can you go on that? Then does habanero <coughs> mango not really count as a bratwurst? Bratwurst is a weird category because in my mind, there is nothing that can't be a bratwurst. That's fair. That's um, fair. Yep. That's but at fair. the same time, I don't know. Because you, you do get off in that, that unique flavor category with the habanero mango. Right. Um, and then you taste like a blue ribbon. Hands down, blue ribbon is, for a traditional brat, it is amazing. Um, best brat out there, um, in my opinion. Um, slightly biased, but I still think it is the best. The apple um, bratwurst is the best bratwurst seasoning we have. It is. It at least has a traditional yeah, bratwurst right. taste For, to in it. In that, if yeah. you want to go in that um, range, then yeah, yeah it's the best. Especially but. with cheddar cheese, it's amazing. In the apple? Oh yeah, yeah. I might. Yeah, we've made a lot of that. Anytime we're testing something. Supreme pizza. Oh, from off camera, Patrick uh, threw out a good one. Supreme pizza is a very good one. Still not as good as apple, but it's definitely better than blue ribbon though. Uh, you can't beat Blue Ribbon. You can't beat it. Well, it's in the name. You can't beat it, huh? Yeah. Uh, um, and then for sales this month, I mean, we're still going to release our normal sales and giveaway video, all that. Uh, but for sales this month, we are putting almost, not all of, but a bunch of our injectors on sale. Um, so going into barbecue and grilling season, this will take away anyone's excuse for not having an injector. Uh, one of the ones we're putting on sale is the Walton's automatic. It's right back up there. Uh, the tube goes down into whatever you're drawing from, and it's just like a sing single pull syringe. That's the one I would say you should get. I mean, I think we're taking like ten or fifteen dollars off of it. The auto injector? Mm -hmm. Yeah, fifteen. Yeah. 15 so bucks uh, it's fifteen dollars off. off, making it, I believe, only nineteen ninety nine or somewhere right around that. Uh, it is a great little injector. This is going to help you instead of just doing marinades on your chicken, your beef, anything like pork, you can inject the seasoning right into the middle of it. It's just gonna work better than marinating. Uh, even with marinating, if, unless you're doing it for eight hours, something like that, it's like just like putting ketchup on the outside of fries. You're not really getting it into the middle. That injector takes all of that out. So, plus by injecting it into the meat while you're grilling it, more juice more moisture is going to stay in there. It's going to give you a better finished product. Uh, we're also putting a couple of uh, injectable seasonings <clears throat> and cures on sale so that you can use that with that. Um, doing one that's for hams. We're doing the Paws Soluble Black Bull, which is my favorite injectable seasoning. If you're looking to do any pulled pork, that stuff is amazing. I know it's generally used for beef, but it is awesome on pulled pork. Not to cut you off, but... Yeah. Uh, there's a couple questions out there. Uh, one in particular, um, like to address a little bit and uh, throw it out to you to see what you want to do as well. <clears throat> a couple people asking about where they can find videos on the ABS smokers. That's one thing we have not done before, which we probably should. Um, our ABS smokers are amazing. We actually have one. Um, if you're local to the Wichita area, we actually rent it out. Um, I should know how much it costs off the top of my head, but I don't remember. I um, no it's it's on our website, but um, 
people can rent the the pit boss with a pellet smoker attachment to it um, it is a really stinking cool grill um, we don't have any videos on it right now um, but that is one thing that we will definitely put on the to-do list assuming uh, I don't know if John can figure out a way how to get them in this room um, <laughs> there's no way to get in this room <laughs> we're limited by a little bit of a small we'll door have to go uh, but we'll find we'll, we'll find a way to record something there because um, the pit boss is I would say is the the best selling out of the ABS ones it's yeah. uh, for what it is it seems to me that grill should be uh, five or six thousand dollar grill um, but by itself without the pellet uh, generator on it it's like three thousand bucks with the pellet smoker uh, on it it's like thirty seven fifty um, so it's very reasonable for what it is and it is huge which might sound like a lot but yeah it is enormous it's made of all thick metal I mean there's not a flimsy piece on it it's got a rotisserie inside so everything keeps rotating through you have no cold spots the back, which is the heat source, also doubles as either a grill or a warming station or a griddle. They have the griddle uh, paddles for it or however you want to describe that. Uh, with the pellet option, you can go straight pellets. You could go pellets and wood. You could go straight wood. The thing is awesome. We bring it to every show that, well, I mean, we don't do many, or I don't go to many shows anymore. But like local shows, we bring it and hook it up. And that rotisserie thing just brings people in like moss to a flame. Everyone's like, oh, it is pretty cool. But what would we do on it? Do I buy enough pork or something to feed everybody here and just smoke a bunch of different things? I could do that. That we sounds could. good. It's just, we had talked to uh, uh, who does event planning anymore. I don't know. Talk to somebody and plan like a food day. Okay. Um, definitely be possible. Okay. But yeah, do something where we do a demo cook on it, yeah. um, get close up video right. of all the little different features and stuff. And that, like John said, the metal on that stuff, it is, it is thick. I, oh, yeah. I have never seen a grill or smoker or whatever that has thicker metal on it than that thing does. <clears throat> Keith wants to know more about the Judge. Um, the Judge is kind of similar. I don't know if you've ever seen the Judge. I've seen pictures of okay. it. It's, it's a big grill, bigger than the Pit Boss. Um, but it's a trailer rig that is made by Green Mountain Grills. Um, that one's unique. Um, we're probably only going to sell that to someone in the Wichita area. Um, you can thank Green Mountain for that. They don't let us sell outside of our quote unquote territory. Um, so if you're outside that area and you want to buy one from us, go complain to Green Mountain for <laughs> me because I'd love to be able to sell outside of our area. Um, uh, real quick, Tim Williams is uh, Saturday tried to make snack sticks with total failure, got irritated and just stuffed into summer sausage casings. Uh, if you want, we'd be more than happy to go through with you and try and figure out exactly what happened. But what I'd like you to do is go to meatjuststicks.com, create an account if you don't have one already, and just post as much information as you can as to what you did and what you think happened. Uh, pictures are also definitely pretty helpful uh, we'll see if we can't track that down for you so Brett asked will all the seasonings yeah. work on whole muscle meat jerky for the most part um, if you want to take a seasoning and use it on jerky it will work um, the biggest kind of question mark there will be what kind of flavor profile is it going to retain um, when you put seasoning into a product and it's ground um, it's a cured sausage or a bratwurst, um, something like that, and you take a bite out of it. As you chew, um, the mouthfeel, I know John doesn't always like the word mouthfeel, um, it, it gives you a certain flavor. When you put it on the outside of like a whole muscle jerky, um, eating it does give you a slightly different flavor. Um, certain flavors can be um, more intense, it can be spicier, um, so it, it will work um, on a whole muscle jerky, but it might take some exploring to yeah. figure out exactly how to perfect it. Um, try, try anything like that as a small batch. Do somewhere but a few pounds to five pounds or so. Um, five pounds of anything I think you can eat. Yeah. Um, it's not going to be so you bad that, it, that yeah. it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be edible. It just may not be exactly what you're looking for. Right. Um, we have definitely done that on other things around here where we've taken a seasoning meant for another product, put it in a jerky, um, and we have ended up tweaking it um, to make it into a perfect seasoning that fits it exactly the way we want. Um, yeah. Don't be afraid to, 
uh, try things out though. It, it works well 95% of the time. A great example of that is the Excalibur barbecue jerky unit makes an awesome summer sausage and an awesome snack stick. So there's designed for jerky, but it's perfect for that. Uh, I just last couple months ago made a summer sausage out of the habanero mango and people loved it. So I mean, you can use one for another whole muscle, exactly like he said, just pay a little bit more attention to it. Uh, but yeah, I've done um, Supreme Pizza in a crock pot with chicken and it's awesome. Uh, somebody asked about when will the uh, April giveaway begin. I just flipped it live. Uh, we have to do some work behind the scenes uh, just on the computer before it's enterable. Sure. Yeah. Enterable. Um, but yeah, we should have it up for you by the end of the day. Yeah. So by, by about six o'clock central time, um, come back to the waltonsinc.com slash win and it'll be up there ready to enter. Deplorable NC and Joe Hell, uh, several comments on there on protein extraction. Just a random comment I have there. Um, I was actually watching some random YouTube videos this week, um, seeing what other people were doing on how to make sausage videos. And there was actually a guy that was making a fresh sausage um, who was saying, use, use uh, your mixing until you get protein extraction, um, but it was a fresh sausage. So protein extraction is awesome on any type of cured sausage. But if you're doing a fresh sausage, remember that the same principles do not hold true. You don't want protein extraction on a fresh sausage. It does alter your texture. Um, it will not be what you are quite expecting out of it. Um, but anytime you're making a cured uh, sausage, a snack stick, summer sausage, Polish, German, whatever, um, protein extraction, yeah, that is going to be a big deal for you. Glenn Bible, would you recommend injecting a whole muscle jerky or just marinating? So we just uh, actually started talking about this on Meat Just Sticks the other day. Okay. Whether or not, uh, with the trying to make the soft tender jerky, whether or not injecting it would be better for people at home since they don't have a vacuum tumbler. No, it's, as long as you cut it thin enough, it doesn't matter. Um, now, here's where Things may, things may vary. Um, a standard jerky recipe, mm -hmm. not trying to do the tender one, not trying to shove as much sugar in it as you possibly can. Okay. You're trying to make just a standard jerky. Um, honestly, I don't think you need to vacuum tumble it. You don't need to va vac pack it. Um, the difference is you do need to add a little bit of water to it, add the seasoning, and you need to let it sit for at least 12 hours. Um, <clears throat> that's how we did it for a long time just as the simplest method, not having to dirty up another piece of equipment or, or do another process. Um, we would just put it in a poly bag, all the meat slices, put the seasoning, um, put enough water just to cover the meat mm -hmm. and let it sit for a day. If you do that, it's gonna soak up enough flavor and you really don't care about soaking up like that much water because the goal in jerky is to get the water out of it. Right. So any, anything you add in water, you are going to have to get out of it. So the goal is really to just disperse the seasoning. Right. So for a basic jerky, um, yes. really no need. Um, for a basic you're jerky. trying to do the soft and tender jerky, right. that's a little different because you are trying to, to push as much of that, yeah. that liquid sugar in there as you can. So for anyone who's still watching but doesn't pay a lot of attention on Meatgistics, uh, five, six, seven, eight months ago, whatever, we tried uh, to make tender jerky like you'd buy in the store. They usually call them like tender bites or tender bits. So we wanted to make that just at home. So we went ahead and took our standard Walton's Bowl jerky. We added 20% of the product's weight in water and 18% in extra brown sugar. It took a couple batches to get it exactly right. But when you do, I mean, it's jerky that's 100% the water activity is low enough that you could leave it out at room temperature for till forever and it would never grow anything. But I mean, you can bend it. It had a great tender bite to it. The only problem with it is that it was insanely high in sugar. Yeah. Uh, so the mechanism there is the, the water is getting bound up with the sugar, which makes it unavailable for microbial growth, but also doesn't let it dehydrate or be cooked right out. So it's pretty awesome. Then, uh, 
21 Cedar, uh, who's a user on uh, Meatgistics, talked about using glycerin instead of sugar. So glycerin's a sweetener, but it doesn't interact with your blood sugar quite the same way that regular sugar does. So we did some testing with that. That seemed to work really well. Um, and then I know Joe Hell just did a, a big batch of it and it seems like it worked great with the glycerin. So cool, different way to do the, the tender jerky. Yes, sorry, Randy, yeah. Uh, pepper and garlic would absolutely work as a summer sausage as well. And I bet you'd be really good. Yeah. Um, Michael Hunkins, can the 1.5 inch mahogany pre-stuck fibers casings be used for pizza pepperoni? Yes, that is, I believe, what you used last time. What was it? The, uh, like making pepperoni, the mm -hmm. 1.5 inch mahogany casings? Yeah, I think it was. Okay. That, that's what I would use. I Smallest assume that's one, what yeah. you used. But yeah, yeah works yeah, great. You just, you have to peel it off um, like any other fibrous casing. Peel it off before you eat. But it, yeah, um, it peels off. Very but easy. it peels off, yeah, super easy. That's often. Um, the only thing I'd say on pepperoni, it's, I, I said it in the video when I did it, but I still think about it. Um, I wish I hadn't put so much smoke on it. Like with pepperoni, a light smoke is good, but I use our PK100 and I mean, for an at-home smoker, that thing puts on an incredible amount of smoke. I mean, as far as color and smoke goes, I, I, I know you've said it in the past, I think it does as good a job as their like, incredibly expensive commercial ones. Oh, for the color and yeah. the smoke, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that thing really pumps on smoke. And sometimes with like a pepperoni and a couple other type of things, I don't want as much smoke, just a little hint of it. So on that, the pepperoni just thought you might want to go a little bit lighter on the smoke. For Tom Bunny Hunter's question, um, I wish more spice mixes rubs would come sans salt so I can decide how much I want to use. Um, that sounds good in theory that you can decide how much salt to put in something, um, but one of the key things in a, in a sausage recipe is the salt content. It is specifically um, set up to be exactly what is needed to give the best product. Um, so that is that's hard would it be it nice is. that you could add your own salt yep. uh, yeah it'd be great but you would not expect to get the same the same product um, as one of our pre-blended pre -blended solutions um, that's why a lot of times uh, anytime i see somebody out there that lists a recipe on the individual ingredients on what's going into it um, it sounds really cool to have your own homemade recipe on how to make a german sausage um, but at the end of the day um, the accuracy of what those ingredients are aren't quite the same of right. what you can get by buying one of the seasonings from Excalibur Seasonings. Um, they are very precise on what goes in. They've spent the time, the research, um, done the testing to figure out exactly how much um, cloves to put in this, this sausage, how much coriander, how much uh, mustard seed, how much salt, whatever the ingredient is. Um, and it just, it, it all comes together in kind of one package. That's why you buy the pre-blended seasonings. So if, if you want to do that, you can. You can try to, to make your own. Um, we're probably never going to have our, our uh, pre-blended seasonings without the salt. Um, it's just kind of the nature of the game. Yeah. But I truly do believe that you're better off using one of those pre-blended seasonings just from the aspect of the accuracy and the preciseness of what is going in there and what it's designed to do. Yep. Um, one of the better certainly one of the better early articles and maybe still <coughs> one of the better ones overall uh like three years ago you wrote that what was it the many functions of salt or why is salt the number one why ingredient is salt the number one ingredient it's yeah. a great ing article you guys should go back and read it if you're interested in that at all um so scotty's backyard barbecue says as a note to everyone make sure when you're doing things you're writing everything down that's a great tip not a lot of people are going to do that um just people won't but it is a great tip, especially if you're trying something new or trying to achieve a specific result. That's awesome. How long you cooked it, what temperatures, what your uh, temperature of your meat was, uh, fat content, everything. Uh, that's a really good tip, but I don't think a lot of people are going to take it. You know, I just had a random idea. What's that? Uh, see if anybody out there would actually use it. Um, what if we had a spot on Meatgistics for you to keep a list of your recipes and what you did um, all the steps involved, so you could track them there. You could go back and reference them later. Then you don't have them on a piece of paper somewhere. Um, Here's the the, the upside for us would be I, I want to publish those. 
Um, so ideally, people yeah, would do yeah, it in yeah. a way that they'd be okay with publishing it for others to see. But you could track your whole process from the start um, to the finish, um, record your notes, take pictures along the way. Um, people could comment. They could help you um, improve something or fix something. Or they could just say, wow, that's awesome. That, um, that final product looks amazing. But so it would live on their profile? Um, with a link to a place where you could see yeah, all? Yeah, yeah. Here's the problem with that is he's very busy all the time, so uh, he would expect me to try to come up with this, or at least the formatting. Yeah? Uh, I'm all for it, it as long as somebody else is doing it. I would I'd probably have um, one of our de developers oh, okay. do something Sounds there. good. No, I think yeah. that's a great idea. Then. So, there's going to involve some code writing. Sure. I don't, I don't <laughs> think you're going to write any code. No, I don't think so. No offense, John. No, no offense taken. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, Joe, uh, like crowdsource troubleshooting, um, that would be ideal. That is kind of what Meetgistics is in a sense. It is a lot of community involvement. Um, it also is a lot of involvement from John and I. Right. Um, if somebody needs help, um, we're there to help as well, but a lot of the help comes from the community as well. But getting a section specifically for that, um, <coughs> But it, like he said, in the last eight to 10 months, there has been a huge uptick in users helping users out with things. So it's been really nice to see. Yeah, um, le less than a year ago, John or I had to pretty much make, make sure, sure that, that we responded yep. on every single topic yep. because it wouldn't always get a response. Now, it's insane. I can just log in and read responses. There, there will get yep, yeah, four or five responses before we even get to it, which is awesome. Um, can you rework jerky into a new batch to tone down or enhance flavors? Um, I, I'm assuming you're meaning jerky that's already been put through the entire process. <coughs> I'm sure there's a good reason for no. I'm going to say no. Um, if you're putting it in, it might start to rehydrate, but no, once it's been cooked and dehydrated, it's it is what it is. Don't. That is what he's asking, right? After it's been cooked or right, dehydrated, I think so. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't redo something if it was something that was already like marinated, ready to go in the smoker, but yeah. you didn't. You probably could try to rework it. Mm -hmm. um, some people do do that um, in bigger commercial plants. They do rework. Um, but it does not go through a thermal processing yeah. piece to it. Someone actually asked that on Meatgistics um, recently here. I think I actually answered one. Uh, wow. Uh, for a change, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Was, that that was the urgent the, that one? That was the urgent yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was the okay. urgent one. He was doing... I don't think that's what that is. No, he was okay. doing snack sticks or yeah. something. He had made snack sticks or brats, I don't remember. Something did not turn out right, and it was already cooked, final product. He wanted to yeah, grind it and make it into then snack sticks or something else totally different. And I'm like, ah, that's not going to work. Once you have cooked something, it does not retain the same properties. You cannot just turn it right. into a new product. Um, best case in that scenario, if you've already cooked it, um, same thing I told the guy, I mean, just get creative with it. Um, I will put any type of meat in scrambled eggs, um, do that. Um, even if it is horrible, yeah. scrambled eggs helps cover yeah, up some that's, flavor. That's fair. Um, make uh, put it as a topping on pizza. Make uh, chili out of it. Do do something. Do a casserole. Put it in a dish of some sort, and it'll end up okayish. Yeah. Back to Scotty's earlier note. Deplorable says I made the best kielbasa ever. Drinking beers. Never wrote it down. Still can't replicate. I know how to replicate the best kielbasa ever. It's called use the Walton signature <laughs> kielbasa seasoning. That honestly, and I, I don't want to overemphasize too much, but that is one of the great things about using our seasonings, Excalibur seasonings, is that when you do it, um, the the recipe on how we suggest to do it is written down. It's all there on Meat Justics. Um, you can go back and follow it again. Our seasoning, what you get out of one seasoning package now is going to be exactly the same thing, 100% down to the T of what you're going to get two years from now. You're not going to have to guess, did I use three tablespoons of salt or three and a half? Where was I at? Um, if you follow our recipes, you use our, our pre-blended seasonings, um, you can come out with the same exact product every time. And then 
at waltonsinc.com slash win. Uh, the giveaway for April is now up, so you can go ahead. There won't be a video with it until tomorrow, but you can do all the other ways to enter. Losing the chat. There it is. <clears throat> what are you using this weekend, Deplorable? I should remember what he bought. Did you look at his order? Yeah. Um, Austin's spying on you. No, he was having problems with his free shipping oh, coupon. Okay. Um, got that working. Yeah, I don't know if, if I, I should maybe extend the free shipping coupon because I know a couple people had issues with it. Um, no, I was just pointing that for me to remember, not for you. Wait, for you to remember? No, 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 for me. Oh, okay. Go ahead, finish what you're talking about. No. At least a couple of people had problems with the free shipping coupon. I can never figure out exactly what. Um, it worked for me. I know it ended up working for a deplorable. If anyone else out there tried to use our free shipping coupon from last Monday, was it Monday? I think it was Monday. Um, whenever. Um, the Live 25, if it didn't work for you, um, let us know. Um, it was Monday. No, it was Friday? No. It wasn't Friday. It definitely wasn't Friday. No, wasn't I have Friday. no idea what it was. Whatever it was. I don't know what day it was. Um, Jay McDonald says, uh, got to use a scale and do it in grams making your own spices or sausage. So if you are, we created on Meat Just Sticks a breakdown for seasonings, one for cures and one for additives. They have a volume measure on there where I went through and took tablespoons, teaspoons, whatever it was, and measured out the correct amount of weight. But Seasonings and even some cures are mixes. So in one tablespoon, if I'm doing something like jalapeno something, I might get more of the jalapeno flakes and less of the salt. So it's not exact. A scale is your best way to go, absolutely. And when breaking anything down, another really good and important tip is to shake up the bag really well. It's not gonna do a perfect job of evenly dispersing all of the seasonings in there but it'll do better than just if you know it's separated by sitting there for a couple of months so oh Patrick hmm. nice good job so yeah Jay McDonald was a former winner oh okay <laughs> I, that would have been very impressive. I thought uh, Patrick had just pulled that name off and remembered that he had won. For anybody who doesn't win, like Scotty's uh, Backyard Barbecue, uh, the, in my opinion, what I would go about if I was to enter our own, our own contest um, to get more entries and to better your chance of winning, um, ref use the referral option. There's, there's a way you can share it on social media, and that link gets you... Um, basically a unique link back to our giveaway. So any of your friends that go enter the giveaway using your link, you get extra entries for every single one. So there are people that they end up getting, I don't even know, a few hundred entries yeah. just off of that. Yeah, I think um, posted on your, on your social media accounts, um, get your friends to enter, and it will really rack up the number of entries yep. you got. Yeah, Joe Hell says he quit social media doing the anti-social, but that's not really true. He's on Meatistics all the time. Yeah, I don't it's know if I want to. I don't know if I want to say this now that he's commented that, but I I do view Meatistics as a social media. It is. No, 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 because I like Meatistics. It is. It is different than what people view social media as anymore. But is a it is a social site. Um, it has become more of that than I thought it would. Yes. More of a community. Do we, didn't do we double, meat, double Monday? meat Monday? I will get it done before the day. Jeez, John. I'll go before I leave today. I will have a double meat Monday. Although that is going to make today a very, almost annoyingly, posty social media day. That's fine. <laughs> okay. If you 
Have you ever like looked at someone's news feed that actually uses social media? <laughs> and it's just post, 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 post. It's, it's yeah. crazy. Uh, yeah. Not going to be a problem to post a few, few times through the day. Um, Joe, don't answer this explicitly directly. Um, just give me a general. But are you using some high temp blue cheese that you have left over from us for a while ago, or did you buy it from somebody else? Uh, you don't have to tell me who you bought it from. Um, but we used to have high temp blue cheese, and it could be all right if it's we, frozen. It could be all right. Oh, it'd be fine. Oh, yeah, okay. if it was frozen, it'd be fine. Yeah. I'm just curious because that's one of the high temp cheeses that over the years that we've discontinued that. Um, We've discontinued a few. Um, the latest was Sriracha. Sriracha. Sriracha is now gone. Right after that one guy said how much he... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we get a few people that are just diehards Terrible. on some of those high temp cheeses. But if we... Like we have to buy several oh, pallets wow. of cheese at a wow. time. If we don't get... And we refrigerate it here. If, if people don't buy that much in about three months... Um, it doesn't work. We can't. We can't go with it. So, because you can buy it and throw it in your freezer at home, knowing that you're going to use it at a certain point. We can't do that here. So it's got to sit in the cooler, and it's got an expiration date. Once that expiration date's passed, that's lost product. I always uh, this time of year, as John mentioned in like kind of the beginning of the live stream, we're looking for new products, doing stuff there, and I always am looking to add a high temp cheese because so many people use it, so many people love it, but trying to find flavors that people will buy that they really love. Um, I'll have to take another look at that. Um, see if there's another flavor we can add yet this year. I'm going to use a, a customer's picture for double meat one day today. It should be fine. No, not that one. Oh. Random, but I know we've, we at least have a couple meat logistics users on. Um, half a dozen here. I think I've seen, seen quite a few familiar names. Um, there was one topic about labeling recently that people were talking about. Um, guy said he was printing off labels from his computer. Um, one of our actual recent purchases in here, um, because we are making stuff all the time, labeling it. We have fancier label machines in the back, but they're kind of a pain to have to walk all the way to the other side of the building, put something in, get a label printed off. Um, so we bought a little machine that does um, this, basically either a one or a two inch label. Super simple. They're little brother label printers. Um, the cheapest ones run like 20, 30 bucks, up to like 100 bucks for the super nice ones. But if you want to label any of your products you're making at home once they go in the back bag, so the name, the date, what the flavor is, is it pork, venison, beef, um, super simple way to do it. Just look for brother label printers. Um, they're really cool little machines and they save a whole lot of time. It's a whole lot nicer to just print out a bunch of labels yeah. than use a Sharpie to hand write on all the bags. And then you usually, if it's me, I forget to write something on there. So then when I go to look at it in the freezer, um, I'm like, crap, when was this from? I've got a few, a few bags of mystery meat in my freezer right now. Um, someday coming up, I'm going to have to just take them out, defrost them and see what they are. My wife refuses to eat them at this point. Uh, <laughs> she doesn't know what they are, so I'm going to be on my own. But uh, She's smart. Get something that does good labeling. Help you out in the long run there. <clears throat> yeah, and Scotty's Backyard Barbecue HACCP. Uh, the rules definitely totally change there if you're doing this on a commercial production level. Um, Commercially, yeah, you, you can't, one, you definitely can't use Sharpie. Um, <laughs> that's a no-no. Um, you can't even use a, a more simple label maker. Um, going totally different there, um, you're probably going to get something that costs 10 times as much, um, but you're going to get like a price computing scale with yeah, a printer. RS like a, a or something. No, a, like a cast label printer. Uh, Doesn't the RS-3000? Mm, kind of. No. Okay. It's, not, it's not quite the same. But 
if you're doing something commercially, some of the things we talk about, we should probably clarify that at times on when we're referencing something as a home production versus a commercial production, because labeling, um, definitely very yeah, different requirements there. Yeah, that could ruin a, uh, a commercial guy's day real quick. Yeah. Uh, Scotty says he works at Hormel. So oh. yeah. Yeah, definitely uh, you guys have uh, some, some nice, fun yes, USDA inspectors to deal with. Um, we know and feel your pain from the rest of the customers we deal with. Scotty, what, uh, where do you work? Is it Wichita? What city? Barron, Wisconsin. So that, uh, I think there were some of those guys from Iowa State. Really? And I sure am. It's either there or Minnesota, one of the two. Jenny O. Turkey Store. Someday we'll have to go take a tour of a big plant. I've been in a few. Um, I know I keep promising you that. <laughs> <laughs> Someday we will. I was exactly going to say. Sure, yeah. Real quick, uh, so just for anyone who wasn't here at the beginning, that is where we're going eventually. We'll get there. Uh, that's the grill we're giving away. It's a Burrow King Regal 590S Pro. So it's like 850-ish square inches of cooking space. It's got a rotisserie, which you can see right there. Uh, it's got nine millimeter stainless steel cooking grids, which are awesome. Five dual tube burners uh, that keep it nice and even. The knobs on the front light up, which may not be helpful, but looks really cool. Uh, it's got a side burner and made right here in the USA. So, I mean, you can't, you can't go wrong with any of that. So. All right, double meat Monday. So Randy Sop said he's Papa Soap, or Papa Sop. Ah, okay. Uh, probably pronouncing that wrong. Um, so another Meatistics user is yep. on there. Um, someday, I think I think we probably need to do, what I, I talked about doing something different last time. Was it a giveaway for just those that watch the live stream? Yep. And we did not do that this time. Um, another one that we need to do is a giveaway just for um, our Meatistics users. Now we can't limit it entirely for legality reasons, it has to be open to anybody, but we could not advertise it publicly. Um, just put it on Meatgistics, allow anyone to enter from there. Pretty much anybody that's gonna enter then is a Meatgistics user, but do a special giveaway for um, everybody out there that is active and involved on Meatgistics. So what do you do? Do you just only post the fact that we're doing a live stream on Meatgistics? No, 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 don't do a live stream oh, okay. with it. Just, just do a regular Just do giveaway. a giveaway, gotcha. do a post on Meatgistics about it, because then like every, everybody um, gets like the daily digest emails, so mm -hmm. they'll get notification on it. Um, okay. And we can, do, we can do a couple posts through it, but that way, I mean, your, your entries would, instead of being like now, for our main giveaways being like a hundred some thousand. Right. Uh, your entries may be like 20, 10, 10 or 20,000 at the most, probably not more than that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. We can look at that. Free shipping, double meat Monday. Deplorable. Um, no, he got, his, he got his free shipping. You said you verified that. I don't know if we can do that. However, uh, I would consider it. Um, the thing to remember about free shipping is that no matter who you buy from, um, they're making the same money. If you get free shipping like every day, um, they're raising their prices. We have competitors out there that do free shipping at lower dollar amounts than us by a long ways. But if you were to put comparable products in the shopping cart and look at the prices, including shipping, at the end of the day, uh, they aren't lower than we are. Um, so it's, it's yeah, kind of a... Know. 
a give and take. If we give free shipping all the time, I can definitely do it, but you're probably gonna see some prices go up by a few percentage points. Panama. We don't, we can ship to Panama. Um, it's gonna be expensive. It depends on where you are in Panama. Do you want a delivery? Uh, John and I can make a trip down there. Oh, and, yeah. eh. If you're right by the beach or somewhere nice. No, I'm kidding. Um, we do we do ship about anywhere. Um, we cannot ship certain items outside of the United States, um, but past that, if it is not an excluded item, mostly being natural hog casings and sheep casings, um, we ship all over the world. Doesn't matter where you are, we'll get it to you. Um, the biggest downside is just the shipping costs may not be so friendly. It depends on where you're at. Uh, so yeah, we did have the shirt, or we do still have the shirts on sale. We're limited in sizes, um, but we are looking at getting some different colors, expanded range of sizes. Uh, and so hopefully in the somewhat near future, we'll have those available again. What's today, Monday? Uh, we'll probably sit down on Wednesday, maybe, and go through hats and t-shirts, okay. figure out what we're doing. Yep, That'll Get work. things on the way for people. Um, are we still a black olive dealer, Eric Flax? Um, don't know if I want to answer that one. Uh, That's why um, I ignored it and went into the next one. Not technically. Um, they just don't sell very well, to yeah. be honest. Um, that being said, I personally have one at home and they are amazing grills. I love them, they're awesome. Um, they just don't sell. For whatever reason, um, marketing, getting people to realize that it's a better grill than XYZ brand yeah. is difficult. Um, if you want one, we can probably still get one. Um, it might be kind of difficult, um, but it would probably be possible. Um, they're extremely well put together, well made, nice and thick. I mean, they're gonna hold their heat for incredibly long periods of time but you can only have the same grills so long trying to get people to buy them. Before, yeah, you know. we had those for like four years yeah. probably and just couldn't sell enough of them to justify anything. They sat in the warehouse way too long. Now part of that is also, and I'll argue with a lot of people on this, unless you're doing a really special event, charcoal and wood is a pain and it's more pain than it's worth. Wood or wood pellet? Wood. Just wood? Not okay. wood. Pe wood pellet's the easiest way to put smoke on anything. Yeah. If, if I'm having a bunch of friends over, I'm just throwing something on my pellet grill, smoking it to a certain degree that everyone's still going to think is great, might not be truly perfect, but, and there's no cleanup. Mm -hmm. I just take it off the grill and go in and hang out with everyone instead of worrying about getting the ash out, getting it all cooled down, getting it all disposed of. There's none of that. So. Oh, I just noticed Tom Bunny Hunter said, give the grill to one of the viewers tonight. Oh, I thought that's why you responded with the... Oh, did, maybe he said no. that after you said, maybe do after. one for just the viewers? Yeah. I figured that was your reason for saying that. No, I just, I keep seeing a bunch of names, like, um, for the past, what have we been, hour or so here, mm -hmm. that um, recognize from Meatistics or somebody referencing something from there. Um, it's one of those things, like, it's all fine and dandy to get new customers, but at the same time, it's kind of nice to reward the ones that have been there for a yep, while. That's fair. I'm also assuming that our Meatgistics users are Walton's customers. So if you're a Meatgistics user and you are not using Walton stuff, use Walton stuff, please. We've got a problem. If there's a reason you don't use something from Walton's, let us know. Send, yeah, send John or I a chat yep. and let us know why, um, because there may be something we can change, we can fix. Um, but for what we do, we're very, very convinced that we provide the best service, the best products out of anybody else. Oh. But definitely price competitively for sure. Yeah, say I was right. Oh no, I was wrong. You were right. You were wrong. To, yeah, yeah, I was wrong. I was wrong. Um, we can still do it through 
We'd still do it through Gleam. Still through Gleam. Yeah, still do it through our normal giveaway. But um, if we don't publish something, but just talk about it on a certain channel, you might pick up a couple people from somewhere, but mostly it'd be who Mostly it'd just be that. Yeah. Yeah. So we did have XL shirts. Uh, those ran out quickly. We have a, a lot of smalls and mediums left. <laughs> no XLs and very few larges. We bought a lot of smalls and mediums because not sure why. when Allie was still here, um, yeah. Allie and I both wore smalls. So we needed a bunch just for us wearing shirts on the daily. Um, you and then we needed small. Yeah. Well, not anymore. I've kind of gotten a little big. I don't know if you've noticed. <laughs> but, um, then we bought more mediums because that was, uh, you were, were, were you in the video Large. room when we bought? Oh. Yeah. When we bought these? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we bought med we bought more mediums because you were there and you were going to wear mediums. So we needed more than just like one or two because you wear them every day. You probably have like 30 in your closet at home. I don't. I have five. Five. Okay. Um, I think this is a large. But then we, we took kind of an average distribution of what we thought was normal America. Yeah. Uh, turns out that our audience likes to eat meat and we're bigger on average than it's not a bad thing. But Patrick would like some too. 2x <laughs> see and and yeah that's hard because when we first bought them we were limited by some stuff and it was our first time buying me just six t-shirts we didn't want to buy a thousand of them right. and not be able to get rid of them so we did as little as we yep. could to make it economical um we will change that next time for a quick sampling would anyone be interested in a camouflage walton's hat if it had orange on it, probably. Don't worry about the orange. There will be no orange on it. Let them know it's not free. Yeah, right. You'd have to pay for it. That's a good point. Thank you, Patrick. I'm not no, looking to no, give these away. No, what? you don't have. You don't have to pay for it. Uh, in the past, with all the hats, we've always oh, done. If true. you if we you order it. like X number of dollars, you yep. get the hat for free. Yeah, free hat. I think the last one we did was like 500, which I know is fairly high for most people. But we could come up with a low, lower dollar amount for sure. Like every once in a while or something. Um, just do like a special on a weekend yeah. or weekday or something. We do like 100, 200 bucks. All right. So you've got, I like the gray, which you're right, deplorable. It is the best color. Um, no. Scotty's, so Scotty's would like one. Uh, my gray one ever. Yep. Gray. Like the gray the best. Boy, I'm seeing a lot. Of I like the gray the best. Good news is, is I don't care what everybody thinks, and we're, we are getting orange hats. We, we will probably get orange, we will get gray, we'll get camo, we'll get everything. That's the beauty with hats, is we can get four or five different kinds, but yep. we yep. will have an orange hat. Yep. Oh, no, I'm not saying we won't. He rules with a strange orange fist. Not iron, but orange. <laughs> um, no, we, we'll do an orange. I like the orange. Beige, black. We'll, I don't know. Definitely doing a black. Walton's a good in blue. I couldn't black too. Mm. That was a good hat. Our all black one before we went to this logo with all the white. It wasn't black though. It was gray. Hey, it started out black yeah, and it went was, gray after you it wore was, it for a while. Yeah. yeah. Patrick's right. It was charcoal. Charcoal. It was fire. charcoal. Sarah wants a camo hat and that ends it right there. We will get you a camo hat, Sarah. She emailed me. Oh. We have camo hats right now. They not, you don't want one of those, Sarah. <laughs> Really? How many do you have? Well, I no, oh, no, yeah, no. I was only giving two. Huh. <laughs> I'll go take it. <laughs> Jay did not get a hat with the Broil King. What Ooh. the heck? Oh, that's a big deal. If you did not, Jay... Uh, Jay, did you get... No, I know he got his shakers because I saw the picture he sent. He didn't get that. Interesting. Yeah. Send us a message if you still have the email. Um, or I'll have John... Did address. you send... Okay, John will address. get a hold of you. Um, we'll get you a hat. No big deal there. I don't think he can get a gray one, though, because I don't think there are any left. You have to take one of those. Hold on, just take this one off your head and <laughs> give him that one. That's so beat up, though. Nobody wants that one. It is. It is. But uh, like I told you, I stole you one of the ones. sign that one and give it to him. I don't think that'd be worth it. <laughs> Signing it's going to bring down the value even further. I don't think that's going to. At least sign, like, the inside. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we'll find a, a good camo pattern that works this year and try to... Ooh, Eric Flax, that's a good idea. 
Walton Hat Picture Contest. We can do that. I don't know if you ever looked on Gleam. There's a whole bunch of other stuff we can do. Um, we can do we can do picture contests. So people have to submit a picture yeah. that fits within our parameters. Yeah. And then Patrick has to go through and make sure that it actually fits within our parameters. Yeah. <laughs> Um, problem with that though is we're gonna have to give away a lot of them because um, we need a lot of involvement because people are not gonna buy the hat just to be in a contest. Right. Um, that one we may save up. I do like the idea to deplorable. We'll probably save that for the fall. And when we get to the fall, we always do promotions where um, sometimes it's a it's a can cooler, it's a cutting board, it's a shaker of the Walton's Ultimate. Mm -hmm. um, it's something Walton's branded that's somewhere under ten bucks. Um, we do a giveaway for everybody who orders over like 30 bucks and we give away thousands of stuff. Um, we could do that with hats sometime through the fall. Just hard one, though. plan out, buy a thousand of them, say first thousand to come, uh, order, get it, and then run a contest from everybody who got one. Okay. So would it be a specific kind that not you would have had to have gotten one of those or it would be one that's also purchasable? It'd also be purchasable. Okay. Yeah. Right. Cool. Well, that's good to know. Is, is the hat we got that's camo, is it Realtree? Yeah. Yep. Joe says he avoids Realtree yeah, camo at I all read costs. That. Yeah, no, it's definitely Realtree. Okay. All right, well, Deplorable is going to go, so if he's not here anymore, I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah, I think That's it's just... time to wrap up. <laughs> Guys, thanks a lot. That was, uh, as always, uh, a lot of fun. I'm not sure when we're going to do our next one. It's probably going to be at least a couple of weeks. It may even be just the end of this month, beginning of the next one. Uh, if we've got anything in between then and now, we'll let you know. But probably we'll see you guys at the end of the month. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>